put some of those little centers in. And this one here. And I'll just, I'll put a few extra in just because. Okay, so actually that's a good brush. So I'm gonna use this little smaller brush for the petals. It's a number four bright. Uh, this is a Princeton brush, again, from, I picked these up at Michael's the other day. And I'm just going to get some of those flowers in there. We can work out the details later. I'm just going to get some of them blocked in. These are the ones I added to the composition. And then there's some kind of there's some stems going here and there. And there's more there's more green there, but I'm going to make it darker green. So sap maybe some of that red oxide and just I'm going to make sure that there's the greens are there but they're darker there's some little leaves um, with these flowers you're just kind of getting something in there so that later when you get more detailed you you've you've got some something to work with when we get more detailed with these and then i'm going to get a little more on this stem here and that's just a little bit of that you know, red oxide and some of that sap green. Just, I like to start with a darker color so I can go in later and put a highlight on there. Okay, now it comes to getting some of that background color in before I, you know, get too fussy with those pairs and, you know, finalize that. I want to look at my reference photo and I've got this dark background but I don't want that dark color. I'm going to switch the color out to something fun and whimsical and same with this light. This is a light blue you know um, cloth I had from Hobby Lobby but it, in the photo it really went kind of pale. Didn't photo very well. It just looks like a white towel. <laughs> So I'm going to just go for something. I was looking at these nice colors and thinking for the dark, I would use something really fun like this grayish blue. And I'm just going to get some of that <clears throat> on there. So it's a dark value like the black. It's, it's darker than this and, and darker than this. So that's all you have to worry about is, you're just getting something in there that's, you can use whatever color you want. If you want it to look more like a traditional still life, just go with that black. And there's no, nothing wrong with painting a black background. <clears throat> it's, um, it looks pretty too. I'm just trying to be a little different today. Some of you take my classes um, and I just thought it'd be fun to show you a different way you know to start a painting with the acrylic background so I'm just getting this background in and I'm starting off with just I'm using no mix just just this grayish blue color and I think you could make this color 
pretty easy. Just use some cobalt blue and white and probably a little dab of orange or, or actually a little dab of that cad red and you'll probably come up with a very similar um, grayish blue color. Almost running out, but that's okay. I've got my tube right here. Okay. So I'm just working this color in here. And Okay. And I've left the edges very rough because I'm going to work on those later. Okay. Now for the tablecloth, I'm going to use some of this ice green. And I'm just going to block some of this in and get it all in there. And I'm going to add some white to some of it. So, and I don't, I haven't painted, I don't paint a lot with water-based oil, but it's um, got a nice smell to it. It doesn't, it has a real natural smell to it, so it's kind of nice. So, I'm just going to get this in there. The reason I want to get the background in is because I want to make sure that compared to the background, the pairs really stand out. So, okay, I'll work on the shadows then now that I've got this in there. And We'll, we'll bring that all together in a, in a few more, in a little bit. I just want to get, start building these. Now you can see, now you can compare more with the darks and the lights and whatnot. And so I'm going to just my brush and Got all these different brushes going here. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in and I I also want to get in some of those shat tape the shadows on the table. So I'm gonna go in and just get some. I might mix some of that and see how it works. Just get some of that blue and some of the cad red here and it makes a nice purple so I'm just going to go in and I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm going to put in some of this purple shadow color here I really just want to make it fun and colorful so I'm not doing the traditional shadows, you know, using more of a gray color I would use. And there's a sh little bit of a shadow in there. And it's also a good way to really kind of look at your values and just make sure you've got a dark, you know, your dark is dark in there and then it, it's, as long as the colors, the values are, you know, 
pretty close. Your painting can be in, in any color you want it to be, really. So I'm just using now a darker purple to get in those shadows that are a little darker. I also thought about the colors I was using. You know, I was using, I knew I was working with this green. So I, I kind of thought these colors would, would go good together. Okay. Now, so now you've got lots happening here. Um, it does definitely look whimsical, so I'm getting I'm I'm getting the look I want. Now I gotta kind of adjust the values some more. So I um, I think I'll work on getting this pair first. I'll work on that. I even have a this green color. Um, that I thought was kind of like a pear, a pear green. But of course, you never really can get a color right out of the tube that, you know, works. It's usually a little, let's see, it's a little, a little icy looking. Let me see. Might work on this one area here. You're better off just mixing it. So that's what we'll do. Get some cad yellow light and I'm putting it into that puddle of paint that I had with the sap and it had some of that red oxide. And I'm just gonna kind of give this a little little stronger shape. Again, I'm really aiming for more of a whimsical style. You know, just, just getting the more impressionistic look of it. And so the main thing I'm really trying to make sure I have is some of these, you know, getting my darks and my lights in there so that I have a strong shape of this Hair. So I want to get a dark green in there for the back of this pair. And I want to definitely lose that brighter edge there because I am not in too interested in the back of the pair. I'm more interested in the front and these flowers. So I don't want to draw my eye in there. So I'm going to Eliminate those lights that were there drawing my eye. Eliminate that. And you notice my pairs are touching, and in the reference photo, they weren't. So that just, you know, happened because I wanted these pairs to be bigger. That's okay. I like it like this. And I'm going to get that take some of that green up the stem there. Get a little bit more of a lighter. You can even get some of that raw umber and white and just kind of Get a nice little highlight there. Let me just zoom in, see if I can zoom in there. There, so you can see what I'm doing. And so there's a little highlight there. And I'm gonna go and make sure I get this one in there nice. Get some of that raw umber and, or sorry, burnt sienna. And I'm going to get, let me just double, double, triple check what I'm telling you because 
I just don't, it's burnt umber. I keep calling it the wrong thing. Burnt umber. I just use, usually, as you most of you know, I, I use the transparent brown oxide. So this is burnt umber, this brown here. Because they don't, for some reason, they just don't make it in, well, not that I know of. They don't make it. Just going to add a little bit up there. Kind of thicken that stem a bit. And I will now go back in and get some white and add a few little highlights here. to those white flowers. Now these flowers here, they're not in the photo. I just put them in for fun. I'm just gonna dull the white down with some of that purple mix, just, just so that they're not, they're not as white as this because they would be in the shadow over here. And I'm keeping them really loose and really abstracty. And this one's in the shadow here. You can get some cobalt blue even and add a little bit of, uh, you know, little bit of blue in those shadows there. So now you see there's a difference between the two. I'm just gonna switch to a little smaller brush because I'm having trouble getting the little strokes. This is a number two flat that I've got here. And I'm gonna touch these up. And just giving the impression there's a little bit of light there. You can add some of that cobalt. And okay, now we can kind of Now we got a little more to work with there. I'm gonna get the background and just kinda get some of that shadow. So I've got this shadow purple color. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that shadow that I see in the reference photo in there. And Working with a smaller brush, I can kind of get in there a bit better. And um, make sure you get the light side of the tablecloth to the edge of the flower. I really love these fun colors and also, I knew that if I painted, you know, underneath with the orange, um, if any of that orange shows through, it doesn't bother me because I knew I was going to be using all these purples and blues and everything. So just softening some of those shadow edges. There. I really think this is a fun painting to try and there's only so many classes a month I can, you know, really schedule, you know, four classes a month. It, there's not enough time to do everything. So 
this is kind of nice to be able to get this one in. I love, I love pears. Okay, so now I'm going to um, look at my values. I see, I see um, this one here. I'm just going to just added a little bit of that kind of grayish green mix I had. And before I'm, I'll just cut in a little bit of that shadow purple color just to just to make sure we got some shapes in there. And okay, so this one, you know, I'm I think it just needs a little bit of a more of a highlight in there. So I'm going to switch back to a larger brush. And I want to get something to really stand out <clears throat> there. So I think we'll have to try a few things. Maybe maybe a little bit of orange and see what that that looks like. That kind of looks pretty and that that sort of works for a highlight color. Let's see what else we can make make here. See if I use yellow, I think it might let's just see yellow and white. Let's see what it looks like up here. That works too. So interesting again using a light <clears throat> value as your highlight, whether it's orange or yellow, it still does the job. It's just interesting to play with those colors. So I'm going to put a little, there's a little bit of a highlight here. Um, and up here. And down here. And I'm just going to add a little more highlight here and just kind of soften where I see that real bright highlight there. I got something else in there, so it kind of messed up the color. And I'm going to put a little bit of this orange right in here. Let's kind of blend that in. And then on the other side, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the sap green mix. And I want to get a little bit more of that kind of orangey green color back here. And there. So just adding a few different colors to the mix. And I'm going to also add a little bit of a highlight to this stem here. And 
and then I want to just get a little bit of a dark color just right around here. And just kind of shaping those colors a little. And then I want to make sure I've got this one here the, in the shadow color in the in my reference it's, it's a lot darker and I'm gonna get there by going with a little maybe some transparent red oxide and the sap green just to bring it bring it a little darker in there So it gives it that real, there's a real shadow right there. Okay. Hello, Marty. I see you. I see you're there. And Susie. And, uh, Thanks for joining the live stream. Okay, so now, um, now we're getting somewhere at least. Uh, let me just get a few more. I want to get a f f just a couple brush strokes here that you know look a little more lively. And And I see some greens back here. Um, I'm just going to just pop in a few of these leaves here and there. And And then we can get some of that orange in there again. So I think I'll get some orange and white and I'll just put in the odd little, little flick of it just for fun. just to add back some of that color. And I think my underpaint, you know, shows through if I scratch some of it off. So you can add the, some of that orange shows through on the pair if you, if you take your palette knife and scratch off some of the paint, you'll see that orange coming through here and there. Gives it kind of a neat texture. And I'll take a little bit of that background color mix it with some of this ice green color and I'm going to just put a few bits of it in there. I 
and I'm going to just use my palette knife to just kind of muck up that that line a little to take off some of those real sharp edges. And if you lift off a little bit of that paint, you'll see that orange coming through there. Just kind of has a glow to it. It's kind of, if you look at that, that's just the underpaint coming back through. So that's really fun. Um, I'm just going to take a little brush now and kind of loosen up some of those palette knife marks there. And I think I'll even add a bit of that orange up in there with my palette knife. So take some of that, that orange color and make sure you like, make sure you're happy with the value. If it's too bright like that, just go and get Go and get a little bit of that orange and doll it down with something on your palette. Like I had the purple there. And just, you know, dull it down a little. That's a little too bright. So I scooped it off. And I go in and get a little cobalt blue and add the odd bit of, you know, a little bit of dark here and there just to enhance your values and, and you know, pop that pair out from the background a little more. So I just added a little bit of that cobalt blue and magenta to create a purple but it's real bluey purple, kind of matches the background. So just little things you can do when you're looking at your, your subject. How can I kind of bring that out a little more? You know, just look at your background and you can sometimes just do the slightest little thing and it will bring it forward. And I'm just softening those little flower centers a little. Just using the edge of my brush here and just so they're not these flat edges. And I'm using a little bit of that sap and I'm just kind of cutting in some of these edges there. And, you know, sometimes I'll look at my composition and I'll even throw the odd um, petal on the, in you know, on the table. But you can do a little petal or two. And just make sure you get your, your purpley blue shadow and you know, dust in a little shadow there. So just like this shadow here, I'm just, you know, I'm putting a little, little something there just to add a little something in the foreground. You can, you can put one maybe over here and just get in some of that shadow again and and put that in there. So I think that's about all I I feel it's it looks pretty good. Um, you could always enhance the shadow in the table a little more. So if I get that cobalt blue and this transparent this sorry this cadmium red and make a darker purple, you know, you can always go in and just get a little more, you know, depth to the shadow there. Um, 
and just kind of add that in there. But uh, as far as getting kind of that whimsical look and feel, I'm just kind of loosening this line here. Um, I think this is pretty good. And um, there's a lot going on in this background. So if you look at it and later it kind of bugs you, you can, you can take some of those marks and loosen them up a little or delete them. But I think it looks okay for now. And I, like I say, I will, um, I'll post the two mediums that I did our, our wash on the tulips with underneath the, in the notes later when I get the video finished. And um, yeah, I just thank you all for coming out to the live stream and um, you can share the video to your friends to watch later. And I look forward to teaching you uh, some of you on Tuesday. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Kieran D. And uh, thank you for joining Marty and Jerry, Barbara, Stevie. I hope you all have a good Saturday.